Today on Ham Radio QRP, we take a look at an old military backpackable radio known as the Angry Nine. The Angry Nine, while portable, weighed about 38 pounds, and when kitted out with the field portable generator, antennas, and all the equipment necessary to use it, weighed in at about 120 pounds, so it was not a lightweight by any means. The GRC-9 RT-77 combo covered 2 MHz to 12 MHz inclusive across three bands. Tuning was accomplished via a rather complicated scale that required you to look up a frequency and match it to a dial code. Looking up the frequency in this chart, you would transpose that to a dial made up of two different components. The first two digits from the scale are on the inner dial and the next two are on the outer dial. Three different transmission modes were supported. CW, modulated CW, and AM phone. Modulated CW is CW sent for receivers that do not have a beat frequency oscillator, for instance a normal AM receiver, so that CW could be heard without a BFO. The two power modes are low and high for each transmission type. For CW, low was 5 watts, high was 15 watts, and for AM, low was 1 watt, and high was 7 watts. Slightly different for the modulated CW. My radio came with a nice J38 that appears to be nearly unused, as well as a J37 with the leg clamp, which would be more typical for field use. It also came with an old Shure microphone, for use on AM modes. Just look at that box from the 1950s. Oh my. The receiver portion of the Angry 9 is the RT-77, a 7-tube super heterodyne radio with a rough tuning scale broken up into three bands to match the three transmit bands. Some of the older radios included radium in their paint for the lettering to make the lettering glow continuously in the case of my radio, the receiver has radium in its paint, which is radioactive primarily in the alpha particle range. I'm going to take some advice of others and attempt to paint over that with a clear coat that will reduce the alpha particle emission. Otherwise, I have to be quite careful around this radio and not expose myself too much. All right, let's have a listen to the old girl and see what it sounds like on receive and what it sounds like when transmitting. Selectivity's not too great. You can hear a lot of stations in the pass band. So that wonderful whirring noise you're hearing is the dynamotor generator supplying the high voltage for the unit. Lovely. And now let's set it up to transmit. First we have to zero beat the transmitter with our receiving frequency. Here you'll notice the side tone just sounds like pops. It's actually a little more audible in person. Um, the whirring from the motor was covering it up. Check to see if our frequency is in use. Now we're going to tune it. And when we tune it, we have to choose the right antenna selector and then adjust the antenna capacitor until we get the most brilliant glow from the tuning indicator neon bulb. Team 50 military radio with a built-in antenna tuner. How cool is that?
The AN stroke GRC-9 was a system of components that included bags of antennas, vertical antennas, headphones, what a torture device that thing is, um, of course Morse code keys, microphones, and um, equipment for using the portable generator, which is a great exercise device. The GN58 has to be cranked at 60 RPM to supply power to the radio in the field. The radio itself is housed inside an aluminum case, easily comes apart, and has all components inside field serviceable. It includes a box of spare tubes and parts to make repairs easier. I didn't try any AM contacts, but you can tune in sideband stations if you want to listen to the babble. I can't think of any intelligent ways to answer the phone anymore. Sometimes I'll get them on there and we'll talk about, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to them about perfume or some stupid thing. <laughs> You're pretty funny, Bobby. N-A-D-D, got it.